Hi guys, um, I love technology when it's working well, but tonight it looks like Skype is not going to work for us. Um, I had everything loaded and it was all ready to go, and then it just booted me out, and now none of us can get in, so it looks like there's an issue with server. So um, I'll do a little pre recorded thing right now with Screencast, and uh, so we'll do a review. I don't have all of my great review questions that were in my PowerPoint, but I will also get those to you at some point, okay? So we'll start off with our PowerPoint here. So um, we are going to start off with the digestive system. Um, a little bit of feedback from our Unit 1 assignment. Just be sure you're using good APA referencing and in-text citation. So as I posted in the announcements, uh, our library has a great guide for doing that. And all of your future um, programs that you're going into will require that you do a good job of that. So something to keep in mind. And remember with discussions that usually there are points associated with um, responding to a peer. So don't forget that important uh, part of it. Okay, study guide. Feel free to pause this if you want to look at it a little more in depth, but you'll also find it in Brightspace. So why do we eat? So what is the purpose of it? So there are four stages of food processing, so those are very useful to review, and it kind of starts off your chapter in digestion. So really, um, you can prevent present uh, a food item to our body cells, for example, like a uh, banana, but our cells really don't know what to do with that. So digestion is the process of making those materials that we ingest into monomers or small little molecules that our body can actually absorb and that it can use uh, to make up um, you know cell like new cells and things that our body can actually use um, so digestion um, is breaking those down and then our body absorbs it from our digestive tract um, into nutrients that we can actually use to survive all right a little question is and this is something to um, be aware of what is the difference between ingestion, digestion, absorption, and elimination. So if you want to pause, you can see if you can answer this question correctly. Um, so ingestion is actually putting food into your mouth, so D, so taking food into your mouth or eating. Digestion refers to C, which is the breakdown of food into smaller particles. So we'll talk a little bit about mechanical digestion and chemical digestion. Those are the two ways that it gets broken into smaller pieces. Absorption is actually uptaking those small monomers or nutrients by our cells. And then elimination, so we don't actually digest everything we eat. Some of it gets passed out as stool, as I'm sure you're all aware. So this is another uh, question for review. So where does digestion, actually mechanical digestion, which is actually squishing the food up, like chewing, and also our stomach will churn some to actually physically make it smaller. That's mechanical digestion. And also chemical digestion starts in this uh, spot too, and that is A, the mouth. So our salivary amylase, so our saliva contains um, that digestive enzyme that starts to actually break down carbohydrates and starches. So the digestion of starch actually happens right there in our mouths with our saliva. And also chewing is mechanical. Elementary canal. So it is a um, good idea to take a look at this um, diagram that's in your book. It is fully filled out in there. Um, here with PowerPoint we could have played around with labeling it together, but we don't really have that option right at the moment. But um, knowing the, uh, you know, the process that food 
sorry, the order in which food will meet our organs in our digestive tract. So starting with our, our oral cavity, going down into this area at the back of the throat, which is the pharynx. So this is kind of like a crossroad area where, um, you know, food is going to touch it, but also air when we breathe. So uh, food passes past the pharynx and enters into our esophagus, which is the long tube. And it actually accomplishes that by these wave-like contractions of smooth muscles. So that's called peristalsis. And that is what keeps our food moving along our digestive tract all the way until it exits. So after our esophagus, it will meet our stomach here. Um, and then it will pass into our small intestine. So the first part of our small intestine is where the liver, um, which creates bile, and it's stored in the gallbladder. That bile will empty into the first part of the small intestine. And also the pancreas, which is this yellow guy kind of sitting under our stomach here, he will also empty some digestive enzymes into the small, the, that first part of the small intestine. The rest of the small intestine is where a lot of our absorption will take place. So that's where a lot of the nutrients are absorbed from the food we ate because they've been broken down enough that we're able to do that. After our small intestine, we will then, our food will then enter our large intestine. This little guy here on the end is our appendix. So after our large intestine, which is, you know, it's a main responsibility there is absorbing water and then we are into the rectum and then the anus where elimination will happen. So going back up at the top, this is a good um, kind of view of the pharynx, so that back of the throat area where we will, where air will pass by and also food will pass by. So if you've ever, you know, inhaled something, a piece of food and you cough a lot, it's actually going into the wrong wrong area at this crossroads. So ideally we will swallow food. That's what this green gunk is supposed to be here. We swallow that. It goes past our pharynx. Um, this little gate here will close. Whoops, sorry. We'll close to protect our airway and then it continues past there into our uh, esophagus. And the other way for air to go is down here into our trachea, so we'll also talk about that later. Right now I'm just going to kind of go over our digestive system. Alright, after peristalsis, that muscular movement, moves food down into our stomach. We have some more mechanical digestion. Food is churning up and creating chyme. So chyme, C-H-Y-M-E, is that mixture of our food and the digestive acids and enzymes that happen here. So we have some mechanical digestion and some um, chemical digestion happening here as well. So the small intestine, the largest part of the alimentary canal or, or, or our digestive tract. And that's again where most of the absorption of our nutrients happens. And a lot of chemical digestion still happens in that first part of the small intestine, which is the duodenum or duodenum, depending on who you're listening to. Okay, so like I mentioned, in our mouths, that's where digestion of starch first um, begins. In our stomach, we have enzymes that start to break down uh, proteins. Then the other major part of food we eat is fat. So that is the responsibility for the most part of bile which is created in our liver. So people that would have liver issues may have trouble digesting fats properly. Also if you've ever had your gallbladder removed, bile is stored there. So some people tend to have trouble with fats because they don't have a, a storage of bile waiting for food um, to enter the small intestine. 
and then pancreatic juice as it's labeled here um, so that is digesting some other things it gets a little more complicated we're not going to worry about that but the other major um, thing happening from the pancreas is it actually gives off something that neutralizes that stomach acid if that stomach acid were allowed to just pass unchecked through our digestive tract it could cause a lot of damage so our pancreas helps to calm down that acid so it doesn't damage the rest of our alimentary canal. This kind of shows a cool uh, cross view of what the inside of our small intestine looks like. Um, if you were to flatten it out, that's what that picture of the tennis court back there was um, in regards to. Like We have a huge amount of surface area on the inside of our small intestine with all of these little villi and microvilli, um, these little finger-like projections all over the inside. It's almost like velvet. And that is to increase surface area so that all of these little blood vessels have all kinds of room to be picking up those nutrients and absorbing them into our bloodstream so they can be used by our body. So the large intestine, um, or the colon, so that's absorbing a lot of water. Um, you'll also find a lot of healthy bacteria and things happening in there that can produce some vitamins for us and we also produce and that at the end of the colon you get feces which is the waste products um, so constipation versus diarrhea so the large intestine plays a big role here so diarrhea is too much water in stool so um, the large intestine foods passing through there too quickly so it doesn't have a chance to absorb water versus constipation where food is moving too slowly and absorbing too much water so often from things like not eating enough fiber or not drinking enough water this is kind of a, a cool video if you want more information on gut bacteria and that sort of thing um, from the nature of things you could look that up I like this uh, diagram, which is also, I believe, in your textbook. Let me just take a peek here. I think it is. Yeah, it, ha it gives a nice um, overview. Like, it has the four stages um, of human digestion. So, ingestion, um, putting the food in your mouth, digestion, which... Um, you know, it describes what where those things happen absorption where it happens and it's all color coded which is kind of cool it's a good study one it's a good one you can redraw yourself to help m remember this kind of shows how um, like food is fuel and it's also linking like what oxygen is good for in our body so our bo all of the cells in our body require fuel um, like in this instance glucose and oxygen to actually create energy in order for the cell to work and then it gives off um, in this case some water and some carbon dioxide so that's the point of eating so that our cells can create energy to work for us um, so something else to point out so essential amino acids so our body requires amino acids in order to make new um, cells in our body and essential ones essential just means that we need to get it in our diet our body can't make it ourselves vitamins are often um, so they're just organic molecules and they're just required in very small amounts that's one reason why I worry so much about silly energy drinks they create they have huge amounts of uh, vitamins in them and we don't need that much minerals so one to keep in mind here is calcium is a really good example it's good for bones and teeth and uh, also like our our heart and muscles depend on calcium as well and then essential fatty acids again something re we require in our diets. One question, um, malnutrition, so it's a, be, having an improper insufficient diet. Most common concern in the world globally is a lack of protein and it causes this kind of swelling um, to happen in the belly. And mainly in affluent countries we're going to see things like anorexia and bulimia, so make sure you look that up in your texts, okay? Really, like 37% of Nova Scotia, Nova Scotians are obese these days. 
And the rest is kind of on our food label assignment, but you're all doing a great job so far. If you have any further questions about that, please use our discussion board. And so that will wrap up our uh, digestion system. So I will see you again for the respiratory system.